everybody, and thanks for joining us. The Tampa Bay Chamber's Public Policy Roundtable on November the 3rd will focus on healthcare affordability. And today we've invited Michelle Rhodes to share some of her insights from her many, many years in the healthcare industry. Uh, this chamber member is the CEO of the Color of Wellness Media. She's a retired registered nurse, a public speaker on healthcare equity. Like the list is so long, Michelle, that I have to kind of there's no time to keep going. Nope. Author of a book, <laughs> it just goes That's on fine. and on. We're really excited to have you join us and really share some of your insights with us. Um, you know, you've had a front row seat to so many things because you've been in the healthcare industry. Um, and so I'd like to start by asking you, we the community, you know, what are the the areas that we should be looking at um, in terms of alleviating this escalating cost of healthcare and the divide that it's creating between, you know, patients who can access it and patients who can't. And, and you said in our prep work that preventive care is really an important place to start. It's an amazing place to start. And thanks again, Lizette, for having me. I appreciate the invite. But yeah, it's so important, especially with, we know the cost of uh, healthcare is rising and it's not just for people who can't access to that. Normally is the case. It's even for people who make a pretty good salary now or uh, may have access to a doctor. Sometimes those extra costs can uh, add up very quickly as well. So it's important that we do focus on prevention. Uh, of course we know, but meaning getting your screenings, meaning go in for that physical actually in the color wellness. We speak about that this month. Make sure you're getting your annual physicals. Um, make sure you're checking your lab work. And of course, we know the tried and true diet and exercise, but it is so important what we put in to our bodies and how often we move. If we can move every day almost, it's so important to keeping things at bay. Yeah. Um, there's just no way around it. And, you know, in your experience, when you were an RN, um, you know, you saw patients really save thousands of dollars when they were managing their chronic diseases, um, but from a, an earlier intervention standpoint. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which is one reason it's so important to focus on prevention. You know, for every dollar that's spent on the healthcare side, which is not the wellness side, you can spend about about $1,100 per $1 of wellness. So it is a really big difference uh, where the stack, you know, starts to add up uh, where it yeah. comes from wellness versus healthcare. So you do save money in the long run if you can get the things that I just mentioned done uh, very early. And yeah. yeah, it's just a way to, to lower those costs. The cost of treatments is much less and less complicated and less side effects if it's caught early on in the process. Um, you've also talked about the importance of community outreach programs. Yes, yes, yes. And I just really want to say this really quick before we move in. The pharmacy cost uh, is really what makes that big difference. So number one that we just talked about is the medicines. Uh, but yeah, for number two, when it comes to community, it is so important for us to look uh, to op different ways, meaning, you know, if telehealth is very popular right now, being able to access your records, you know, online, making sure you have a provider that can talk to you uh, online or offline as well. Uh, it really helps that communication keep going so you don't have to keep going into the doctor. You can actually send the messages now. You right. can actually send emails. So there's a ways to just get what you need and keep your treatment plan moving forward. Most people really identify and understand the advance the advantages of using telemedicine but they may not understand, you know, how the electronic health records kind of helps them in this area of reducing cost, maybe sharing information among doctors so they can get the faster, better care that they need. Can you explain that so that our um, our audience can understand it a little better? You, you said in our prep work that it helps to streamline the operations. So, so, so important. And it's still a uh... Topic of concern in healthcare because we have, of course, like you mentioned, physician to physician, things can get disjointed. So we do want things streamlined where all the doctors are getting the same information. As we know, sometimes you can remember some something you told a doctor here, but you forget to tell another doctor there, and then pieces get missed. So it is so important that we hopefully can find a way to keep our records together. That history, I can't tell you how important being able to recall your family history, even your personal history is so important to getting the best treatment plan. So we've talked about, you know, two areas so far, and you said that, you know, if you could only pick three, 
that third area you wanted to talk about would be encouraging value-based care. Explain to the audience what that is. Sure, sure. This is another great way to save money. And we are used to, again, the traditional way, what we call fee-for-service, meaning you uh, receive some sort of service in healthcare and you pay a certain amount. Well, now there is a value-based model where a patient can find a provider. And most times I've seen them as nurse practitioners or other providers or clinicians who have their own practices. They will bill a flat rate. So basically you're able to access that provider for a certain amount of times. It's not unlimited, but normally they'll have maybe unlimited blood work, uh, but you might be able to see the physician twice one in one month for a flat rate, such as anywhere from like $99 a month up to maybe $300 a month. But in the long run, you're able to save money because you're just paying one flat, flat rate and there's no additional bills coming in the mail. And you said that that kind of um, increases the collaboration among the healthcare providers? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, if it's a nurse practitioner, and now in Florida, some of them can practice independently. So that provider will be your provider. So again, treatment plan is all in one spot. If they have to send you to a specialist, they can do that and send it directly over. However, if it's a physician that's in charge of that nurse practitioner, again, they're right there and able to share that information to keep the treatment plan moving forward. So it does, again, just help streamline the communication. Wonderful. Well, Michelle, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate you taking time to talk to us about this. Uh, for the affordability of healthcare is is something that some people, you know, really it's overwhelming. And so it's hard to kind of do the deep dive on problem solving because you really feel like nothing you could do to fix this. Uh, and so it's great how you've really uh, looked at three different areas and with the goal of creating, um, you know, a more equitable healthcare system, you know, you've helped us to address curbing the rising cost, improving access, enhancing the healthcare delivery. And that's certainly um, the mission of the Tampa Bay Chamber in having this public policy roundtable. So thanks for helping all of us get started and get ready for that event. Um, we hope you have a great day and thank you for being such a great member of the Tampa Bay Chamber. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks for having me.